Hello, Mr. Slope Guy here today to help you with interior angles of polygons. And let's start off with what is a polygon. So a polygon is a plane figure, meaning that it lies in a two-dimensional flat plane. And it has the following conditions. It has to be formed by three or more segments called sides. So up here we have a pentagon, the side part, and each of these places where each side meets is called a vertex. And each side intersects exactly two other sides, one at each end point. So it can't overlap or crisscross. It can only meet at one point. So they don't overlap. And none of the sides are curved. So it meets those three conditions. Three or more sides. Each side meets at exactly one end point, And they don't overlap and they are not curved. If it meets those conditions, we say we have a polygon. So we have... Polygons can be in two different categories. We have regular polygons, and a regular, just regular old polygon, regular meaning typical, average, kind of, that we have the exact same sides and exact same angles. So if I said, oh, it's just a regular triangle, meaning a regular triangle, meaning all the sides and all the angles are equal. Or if we have a regular pentagon, we have five equal sides, five equal angles. So a regular polygon, the sides are the same length, that's called equilateral, and all the interior angles are equal, meaning equal angular. So if something is not regular, it is called irregular. So if we have an irregular polygon, either we have sides that are not equal or angles that are not equal. So it could be not equilateral or not equal angular. So regular has a very specific meaning in geometry. Regular polygons, all the sides and all the angles are the same. Irregular, they're not all the same. So here are a list of polygons by their names, and you'll need to know these. You'll need to have these memorized um, to help your life in algebra, needed, um, algebra and geometry. You really need to know the um, vocabulary that goes with it. So a three-sided polygon is also known as a trigon or triangle. A four-sided polygon is a tetragon or quadrilateral, quad meaning four. Five-sided polygon is a pentagon, six sides hexagon, seven sides heptagon, eight sides, we all know that one, octagon, and nine has a couple different names. It goes by commonly anagon or nonagon, ten decagon, eleven not big enough for you to remember or memorize, but twelve is a dodecagon, and normally we just go by the number and the word gone. So we can call that an n-gon. So we could have a 13-gon, a 27-gon, a 58-gon. Um, we just call it by the number of sides. So the most common ones you'll need to know the names of. You will run into those tests, quizzes, ACT, SAT. So you're going to need to know what those are, um, the common ones. So the interior angles are the ones inside the polygon. So here we have a regular triangle. And we have the interior angles are formed where the sides meet inside the polygon. So we have angles A, B, and C. And triangles are so common with polygons, you need to know this. Write this down, most important thing of the day. The sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. It doesn't matter what kind of triangle you have. The interior angles will always add up to 180 degrees for every triangle. Every scalene, every right triangle, every obtuse triangle, all the different triangles, the interior angles always add up to 180. We have two very commonly used formulas to deal with angles of polygons, and they both do different things. So this is an important slide to have in your notes for examples. So in a polygon, the sum of the measures of the interior angles is equal to 180 times n minus 2, where n would represent the number of sides. That formula works with regular and irregular polygons, 180 times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. The second formula we have here is the measures of an interior angle, that's for each angle or one angle of regular polygons. So this formula only works with regular, where all the sides and all the angles are equal, then we can do 180 times n minus 2, which finds the measure of all the interior angles, divided by n, which if n is the number of sides, that will give us the measure of each angle. 
So the first formula, the top one, 180 times n minus 2, that works for regular and irregular polygons. That gives us the sum of the measures of the interior angles. That gives you what all the angles together add up to. Then if we have a regular polygon where all the angles are equal in measure, we can take it one step further and do 180 times n minus 2 divided by n, and that will give us the measure of an interior angle or each of the interior angles of a regular polygon. So they're close uh, formulas, but um, you can't use this second formula if it's irregular. This second formula only works for regular polygons. This one works for both. For the, but this one only finds the sum. This one will find each angle, but it has to be regular polygons. All right, so let's look at some number examples and things like that. So we have find the sum of the interior angles of the polygon. All right, so we have how many sides? One, two, three, four, five. So we have a pentagon. We can use the formula 180 times n minus 2, and we can replace the n with the number 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. Put that in my calculator, math, 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 180 times 3, I get 540 degrees. And this would work for all pentagons. The interior angles would always add up to 540. This pentagon to me looks regular. It looks like all the sides and all the angles are equal. So since all the sides and all the angles are equal, we could take this one step further and find the measure of each angle or find the measure of one angle. And that would be taking this 180 times n minus 2 divided by n, or in this case divided by the number of sides or actually the number of angles, because sides and angles would be the same number. So if I take that 540 divided by 5, I could get the measure of each angle would be 108. So this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, all 108. And together that adds up to my 540 for the total. That would not work with an irregular, uh, irregular polygon, but works great with a regular polygon. If it was an irregular, we would just have to stop and say the sum is 540. Find the sum of an interior angles of a 21-sided polygon and the size of each angle. So we're having a regular polygon with 21 sides. So back to our great formula of 180 times n minus 2. We're going to replace the n with the number 21. 21 minus 2 is 19. Then I could do in my calculator later 180 times 19 and get 3,420 degrees. Now, we can find each angle or an angle by dividing that by 21. And since it's a regular polygon, each angle is 162.85 degrees. All right, we have a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, but it is not regular. Notice how all the sides and all the angles are not equal to each other. In this one, we're asked for the sum of the interior angles. And the sum of the interior angles for this quadrilateral will, will be the same for all quadrilaterals, all squares, all rectangles, all trapezoids. All four-sided figures will have the same measure for interior angles. Just like a triangle, the angles always added up to 180. We're going to look at this quadrilateral and see what the angles add up to. So we can always use our 180 times n minus 2 to find the sum of interior angles. We're going to put in 4 for the number of sides. 4 minus 2 is 2. 180 times 2 is 360. So these angles together, angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 add up to 360. I can't find how much each angle is because this is an irregular polygon. So irregular, we can't just divide that by 4 because these are all not 90 degree angles. This doesn't work out. Now, if it was a regular quadrilateral, like a square or a rectangle, then you could. Um, a square being a regular quadrilateral. Rectangle, angles would be great. They're all equal, but not the sides. So not regular. All right, so we have a four-sided quadrilateral, and we just found out that the interior angles of every quadrilateral add up to 360. In this one, we have three measures, 60, 80, and 70, and one unknown. Well, we can do a quick, easy equation that these four angles together add up to 360. So 
x degrees plus 60 degrees plus 70 degrees plus 80 degrees plus 360 degrees equal 360 degrees. 60 plus 70 plus 80 is 210. Subtract 210 from each side. And x is 150. So in order for these three, these four angles to add up to 360, angle x has to be 150 degrees. All right, that will get you guys going on polygons and their interior angles. Have a great day.